Well, um, hi, YouTubers. This is your favorite uh, Toyota Sienna repair guy. I got a 2005 Toyota Sienna, and my door was acting up. So, here's the part that was acting up. It's a door lock actuator, but without further ado, let me press the button and see how my repair job went. Alright, let me talk about it now. So this actuator is held on by two bol uh, bolts. They come in from the back side of here, and Toyota had the wisdom, the uh, almost infinite wisdom, to lock tight those bolts in there. So pretty much everybody struggles to unscrew them from the back. They're a plain old Phillips head. The bolt is quite a soft metal, so you'll strip out the Phillips head pretty easily. Well, I had the bright idea, it's the immensely bright idea, to drill out using a drill, drill out that uh, screw or that bolt. Now this hole is probably the best hole I've ever done of the four. If you go look at the next hole, it's pretty messed up. And it got worse from there. Let's go look at the other side. If I can uh, get this thing to focus. Okay, that's uh, that's passable. But this side is horrendous. Not only is this side horrendous. All right, so I got those bolts out of there, and I I decided to use uh, some skinny bailing wire, probably, and I put two two courses through there. And then tighten it up by twisting and twisting until it's reasonably tight. There's a, quite a bit of slack in there still. But it does the job. Now if you notice, this is handmade. You want, um, so let me, uh, let me try to see what's going on here. Okay. See, it's, it wants to move, but it doesn't want to fall out. Um, of course, where's my broken piece? Oh, here's my broken piece. So in all that drilling action, I busted the little holders that are on this piece of plastic. Um, busted them right off. So, if that's just holding it on there, I figured if I loop it through and come back, It'll also hold it on there, you see, that's not going anywhere, it's not going to fall out. Whereas, this, of course, would just fall right out. So there you go, it's on, uh, It's not quite the exact same distance. So, but it's close enough, the door, the door does open, does pull it. And, when I was drilling, the drill bit uh, somehow slipped up in there. And I may have been a few things, I'm not sure, but I definitely broke that one thing. But there you go. Um, now, okay. So these actuators, the funniest thing in the world is, this door latch actuator is $23 if it's the busted one on the passenger side. If it's the busted one on the driver side, the lowest I could find is about $95, which means to me that the driver's side one, people just don't use as much as the passenger side one, and it doesn't break as much, so there's just not a market for it in the, the world of knockoff parts coming from that glorious country where you get the cheap buffets at. Alright, how did I repair this actuator? Well, if you unscrew... If you unscrew, so you flip it over, you unscrew these three little Phillips headers, one, two, three, you will find some very nice greased up gears, extremely nice, 
and a very high quality DC toy like motor and it's got a part number printed on it and if you take that part number and carefully copy it down and type it into the internet using your favorite search engine you might come across the company called DigiKey which sells them for about five dollars each with postage I chose the cheapest postage about two plus postage came out less than fifteen dollars and sure enough this is the uh, the motor pops out and pops in um, you kind of I uh, it has a little um, foamy piece of rubber to kind of take up the slack so you want to keep it so it's pinched together by the case keep it in a position it snaps in into two slots to um, so that I you know I should take this apart for you to see it but I guess I didn't but use your common sense it snaps out snaps in you can you know carefully take all these gears out which I did and put them back together um, just either video videotape yourself while you're taking it apart in case a piece falls out and you don't know where it goes um, again the, the concept of drilling this out after I did it I guess there's some other thoughts if you are to put a hot soldering gun, maybe you can file off the tip, just have that butt face. Um, it may deactivate, once you get the temperature up high enough, it may deactivate your um, the Loctite uh, thread locker. Another idea was to take an extremely, like a 1 16th inch drill bit and drill down the center and if it wibble wobbles out of the way, you have more control than a large drill bit. Now, the problem I had was I didn't go large enough on the second drill action. And so, the tip of the larger drill hung up and broke off inside the hole, which makes it makes for extremely dr um, messy drilling. I think that's what I... I'm not sure if it was um, on this. I, no, it probably wasn't on this. It was one, one of those over here makes for extremely messy drilling um, another uh, observation is the length of your drill hole that little metal insert is only goes maybe three-eighths into the plastic it doesn't go all three-quarters or so of an inch so you don't have to do such a long drill job and another thing is if you get about halfway through maybe one-eighth of an inch drilling it may be enough of the Loctite removal and also it may have heated things up there um, that you can get back there behind there you can unscrew all these ten or so all the way around roll your window halfway down take off the slack and then you can reach back behind there to, to get with a right angle a right angle shaped um, number two Phillips to get at that now I guess the suggestion if you don't want to do any of that taking a parting um, Drill out uh, what you can of the, so drill the 1 16th, you know, about a half inch deep. That'll make, it'll get you past the, um, the, the insert. And then go back with maybe something that's quite large so it won't get hung up on, on the sides of that 1 16th inch hole. Maybe, maybe something a little larger than an eighth, or maybe an eighth would do if you use the 1 16th. It won't get hung up. But maybe the 1 one one out from one sixteenth. So the drill, the small drill hole will act as a guide for the large drill hole. And if possible, if you have a punch, punch the center, that make a center punch to help your drill bit not wander all over the place. As I learned from experience, uh, mine wandered all over the place. All right now, how did I get that uh, wire on? Well, it's pretty stiff, so I bent it and just sort of put it through the. There's a hole there. And I bent it and then just kind of felt around until it came popping out of the, of the other second hole. And I pulled it out and I did that twice to get two, two wraps for good measure. And then I twisted tighten it. This is pretty stiff. It's not, it's not flexible um, wire there. Alright, that's how I repaired my door which had the classic problem of the latch motor had uh, used up its brushes. I took it apart. They were pretty well used up. And the new ones do the job. Pretty good. 
Um, you know, another thing to watch out for, as you can see right there, I, my drill bit ate into the case. Ate into the case, so I should probably go back there with a piece of electrical tape to keep the dust from entering, entering the little gearbox. Alright, uh, there you go. Uh, redneck way to repair your Toyota Sienna door on a budget. Happy travels.